Hey there everyone, this is Michael Dugo, the Nootropic Reviewer, and in this video today you're going to learn about my top 6 nootropics for 2023 based on their benefits, my experience, their side effects, and you're also going to learn how to take them and how not to take them. And the very first nootropic supplement is Tonkat Ali, which is a herbal remedy that's been used for centuries in Southeast Asia, and its specific uses were for uh, fevers, it was for bacterial infections, and erectile dysfunction. However, now its most popular use is for boosting testosterone levels as well as eliminating fatigue so you can have longer work days. As shown in this paper over here, and this is fairly recent, they took a number of studies and they compiled it into one article, and they go on to say that most of the studies reported a significant improvement in total testosterone after Tonkat Ali treatment. And in one paper, they said it can be considered as an alternative to TRT. TRT standing for testosterone replacement therapy. I absolutely do not believe this to be true. I was on TRT for several months and I really did notice a significant increase in testosterone, whereas with Tonkat Ali, you do feel somewhat of a boost of testosterone levels as far as your libido being higher, having better sleep, feeling stronger at the gym, but it's nowhere comparable to TRT because TRT you feel instantly and you know something's different from the first week. And you can take it at any time during the day. It doesn't have stimulatory effects. So even if you're taking it late in the evening, don't expect it to disrupt your sleep. Be particularly skeptical about the brand that you ingest your Tonkat Ali in because it wasn't until I found the right form of Tonkat Ali, which had the right amounts of uropeptides and urocolmenones for me to start seeing those results. And the form that I prefer is from Nootropics Depot. I like their 2% form of Tonkat Ali, just taking 200 milligrams once a day. And I'm some that's very sensitive to nootropics and I saw benefits literally within the first week. One of the first things I noticed when I ingested Tonkai Ali was that I didn't need as much sleep. I could get away with six hours of sleep rather than seven, but I saw that specific benefit only for a few weeks and then maybe I built somewhat of a tolerance. But one benefit that has not gone away after two years of use with Tonkai Ali on and off is the increase in libido. This is probably the most effective supplement when it comes to boosting your libido while being relatively safe. And cognitively speaking, it's been shown to have really great results around anger, confusion, irritability, making you that much more productive. But be warned, make sure that you have Tonka Ali with a meal. If you have it in a fasted state, then you're going to be setting yourself up for really negative side effects. Nootropic number two for 2023 is an adaptogen. It's a herbal supplement called Rhodiola rosea, which is especially good at fighting stress and fighting fatigue. A lot of people describe Rhodiola rosea as taking a nap in a pill because once you ingest Rhodiola rosea, you feel the same benefit as you would have felt from taking a 20 to 30 minute nap in terms of clear mindedness, feeling in a better mood, actually feeling more energy and having more physical energy and it even can act as an appetite suppressant making it ideal for weight loss. If you ingest rhodiola rosea in the middle of the day, you'll find that during the second half of the day, thanks to the use of rhodiola rosea, you're not as cognitively taxed. So your concentration is high, your willpower, your discipline is high, and you feel a lot more energetic and you're even in a better mood. And a benefit that draws a lot of people to take rhodiola rosea is that you don't really seem to need to take a break from it as often as you would with other nootropics. Like other nootropics like the racetams, uh, nupept, modafinil, even some of the adaptogens, they often do require a period of taking time off. Whereas with Rhodiola Rosea, um, I pretty much use it like 330 days of the year and I still get the same benefit as I did from day one. With this one, I don't think that the brand really matters that much. I've tried Rhodiola Rosea from a number of different brands over the years and they've all worked especially well. Common dosages include 300 to 500 milligrams. I'm typically using uh, 500 milligrams twice a day, once in the early afternoon, once in the late afternoon. Be mindful that Rhodiola Rosea is somewhat stimulatory, so you wouldn't want to have it too close to sleeping. But then again, I'm somebody very sensitive to nootropics. The way it fights off stress, it hits you instantly and most people don't experience any negative side effects but some common ones do include light headaches. Nootropic number three is ashwagandha which is a herbal supplement and where it's most commonly used is for stress and for anxiety and the form in which ashwagandha that I'm currently taking is the KSM 66 form which is a particular extract that's really good for cognition at the same time good for relaxation and that I really like the form called Shodan. Shodan is a supplement most commonly used before bed. I just take 120 milligrams and I'm able to get a lot more deeper of a sleep than I would have without it as shown in this study over over here, the subjects had uh, less instances of waking up in the middle of the night and woke up feeling a lot more restored and rejuvenated. And with KSM 66, that's the form of ashwagandha that is not as sedating. I'm typically using 500 milligrams once a day. Some days when I'm a little bit more stressed than typically, I would take 500 milligrams twice a day, along with my bedtime serving of shodan. And some people do report good results with their body composition as far as building more muscle and losing fat. And that could be because of the fact that there is some light research done showing that ashwagandha can in fact help with testosterone levels. And there's also evidence that ashwagandha can effectively reduce cortisol levels. And that's quite unique to find in a nootropic supplement. Ashwagandha and phosphatidylserine are pretty much the only two supplements which do that in a reliable fashion in which you would use them. But I don't think that reducing your cortisol levels is as important as people believe it to be. It's when you have chronically high levels of cortisol levels. That's where it starts to be a problem when it comes to being cognitively impaired and even having negative side effects like weight gain. But you find that people either love ashwagandha or they hate ashwagandha. And that's because of the really negative side effect and pretty common side effect of feeling demotivated, which looks like you get 
quitting to work, feeling tired, not really having any sort of um, ambition to go ahead with your day. Over here on Reddit, somebody asked, is there any way to counter the demotivation you feel from ashwagandha? To which somebody responded, it's actually a pretty common side effect. Don't know of any other way to counter it other than not taking ashwagandha anymore. So if that has been the case for you, I would recommend you either change the type of ashwagandha that you're using or change the frequency of which you take it in. Nootropic number four is L-tyrosine, which is an amino acid that's found in egg whites. It's also found in chicken breast. And when used independently, so without other calories in supplement form, you actually feel a boost of concentration. I like to think of L-tyrosine uh, similar to what caffeine would feel like, except that with caffeine, it keeps you up. You also get physically energized. With L-tyrosine, it's more like mental energy. You feel a boost of concentration and it doesn't keep you up at night. So at the end of the day, let's say when you need a couple of hours of extra energy, you don't want to ingest caffeine because it's too late that it'll hurt your sleep quality. Then ingest something like 500 to 750 milligrams of L-tyrosine and you will see really good results. So the key for this nootropic to work is take it free form and ideally in a fasted state. If you've already broken your fast, then that's okay. You can still use L-tyrosine. It's just that you'll see the best results a couple of hours at least after the ingestion of your last meal. Tyrosine is a precursor to three neurotransmitters being dopamine, norepinephrine, and adrenaline. So when stress depletes your neurotransmitter stores, tyrosine can replenish that, making you feel a good boost of concentration. And tyrosine converts directly into dopamine, which is going to be responsible for you feeling a lot more motivated to get those high priority tasks accomplished. I find that I use L-tyrosine and I'm like suddenly setting deadlines for myself, setting goals. I'm much more goal oriented in my thinking. And I first discovered L-tyrosine over a decade ago because I was taking pre-workout products and really feeling good. And so naturally I deconstructed the pre-workout products and identified that L-tyrosine was the one ingredient aside from caffeine that was doing most of the magic as far as boosting energy and boosting concentration. To think that this is an amino acid, not a stimulant, yet I feel energetic, I feel goal driven, makes me really believe like this is the one nootropic that a lot of people are missing out on. And so for that reason, I have L-tyrosine in the capsules and also in the powder form. If I'm using the capsule form, it's typically going to be 500 to 750 milligrams per serving. And that's a serving size I would recommend if you're using it for energy during the workday. But if you're using L-tyrosine for pre-workout purposes, then you can get away with, with doses like one gram to even two grams. And the most common side effect with L-tyrosine is headaches. If that is the case, then I would recommend that you switch up the form of L-tyrosine. And otherwise, some people build a tolerance to it. I'm somebody that has been using L-tyrosine over a decade. I don't have any sort of tolerance to it whatsoever, which makes me really pleased with taking it. And nootropic number five is terkestrone. And man, I'm always excited when a new testosterone boosting natural supplement hits the market. I've used it over the past year and I'm really satisfied with the results. And going into 2023, I'm especially excited that this is a really good nootropic at better handling stress while increasing testosterone levels. The plant that terkestrone is extracted from is an adaptogen. And any supplement that has adaptogenic-like properties is good for fighting off stress. And with the help of adaptogens, we're better able to handle that stress. We have a more positive relationship to stress. So we're going about our day in a much more healthy fashion. And the way that it boosts testosterone levels isn't necessarily by its relaxing properties, but it does act as an agent that can help you to reduce cortisol levels similar to ashwagandha does. Procesterone side by side with DECA or another testosterone derivative, it essentially acts the same way. It increases testosterone and performance and recovery. And something that can make you a little bit more comfortable with ingesting trochesterone is the fact that you're probably already consuming it in your foods as it's known to be found in spinach, mushrooms, asparagus, and quinoa. But you would really have to take it in supplement form in order to feel the benefits from trochesterone because a common dose like 500 milligrams once per day, that's what I'm using, is equivalent to something like one to two kilograms of the raw spinach. And one great benefit with trochesterone is improved muscle growth. And the way that that happens is by increasing protein synthesis. So what happens is when your protein synthesis is higher, it's more likely that the amino acids you're consuming are going to be used to build muscle tissue. If you've ever heard about people ingesting a lot of branched chain amino acids, they are doing that to increase protein synthesis. And we also want to be mindful of not having low protein synthesis, which can happen when your endocrine system is not working right or you have low thyroid levels. And then another major benefit is that it improves insulin sensitivity. And this is a big deal because higher insulin sensitivity means when you're consuming food, you're more likely to become energetic afterwards rather than being tired. If you've heard of uh, low insulin sensitivity, also known as insulin resistance. That's what diabetes is. It's when you eat and you feel tired, you're feeling the exact opposite with the use of terkestrone. So what this means is that you're consuming calories in a much more efficient manner. You're also going to think a lot clearer. You're going to have good cognitive flexibility and you're not going to feel these sudden energy highs and energy dips during the day. I've been using 500 milligrams of terkestrone once per day. That's the common dose and it doesn't really matter if you take it in a fast state. I prefer taking it first thing in the morning. And nootropic number six is lion's mane mushroom, which is most often used for 
for a mood. It's also used for feelings of detachment. I find that I'm far more curious about everything when I'm ingesting lion's mane. So you start taking lion's mane, you suddenly find yourself intrigued about people, about situations that you didn't really find that interesting to begin with. So it makes it very good for being a conversational nootropic. You ingest this supplement and then suddenly you have a really good interest in actually wanting to talk to people, being inquisitive, asking about themselves. And then at the same time, you have this level of calmness. So building your business um, is obviously requires a lot of stress, but when you're ingesting lion's mane, you'll find it much easier to delay gratification, make decisions that are going to help you long term. And I've yet to find any nootropic which has this sort of benefit that you're actually ingesting something and feeling somewhat smarter. Not everybody feels it, but I'm somebody that does see the benefits with it. And there's a reason why lion's mane mushroom is the most popular mushroom nootropic supplement. It's not stimulatory, so it doesn't matter whether you take it in the early stages of the day or in the evening. Also, it doesn't matter if you take it in a fasted state or in a fed state. And most people find like the most immediate benefit with lion's mane is this feeling of everything is going to be okay. Let's say if you're going through some sort of financial hardship, you want to believe everything is okay and you ingest lion's mane and suddenly you have this like overwhelming feeling of peace, which makes it a great nootropic for you to just be present and go about your day. The way that I'm currently taking it is taking 300 milligrams three times a day, but I'd recommend starting off with 500 milligrams once a day. That's how you're typically going to find it in capsule form and then building it up to something like twice per day. There's really no need to go 300 milligrams three times a day. It's just that I work very long days and I don't mind using the powder form. Uh, with this nootropic supplement, the brand really does matter. My favorite being the dual eight to one extract from Nootropics Depot. Although if you get lion's mane from a different vendor, most likely you should feel some sort of benefit, but it won't be as pronounced as the eight to one form. What nootropic am I missing from this list? I want to see that in the description box below. If you did enjoy this video, consider subscribing, drop a like, and if you'd like to chat with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can do so over on Patreon or send me a direct message on Instagram and be sure to visit our Discord server, which has a 24 seven chat room. We're answering questions in a time sensitive fashion and having a lot of fun. I thank you for your interest in nootropics and I look forward to seeing you all next time.